Hello, everybody. Hey, our update today is going to be a little different. We were just in a meeting with a probate and a state attorney, and we thought it was such great information. We want to share it with you. We do. There's a lot to learn. We're not attorneys. We're not accountants. We're not CPAs. We're just talking about general advice that we just learned from an attorney. So definitely speak to your attorney and your CPA. We're not giving advice, but we are encouraging you to get some. So let's uh, get started here. Yeah, absolutely. You got to start somewhere. Is your estate plan in order? You know, there's a lot of misconceptions about what that means and what it costs, and we're going to run through that. So um, what is an estate plan? Well, you get to decide where your property goes and to who and all the, the path that that is going to take. You get to determine if you do an estate plan. Yeah, usually it's a living trust, and you don't want to end up in the dreaded P word for probate. Yes, we're going to give you an example of that here in a minute. Um, but the key documents in an estate plan, just for basics here, we're starting at the beginning. A trust, a will, the power of attorney, advanced health care directive. So if anything happens, you have already predetermined what happens to you and who's in charge of you if you're incapacitated. The HIPAA release authorization, that is a... A form that gives your permission to give your health information out to certain people, um, the assignment of property, of course, and your certification of trust, which is basically an overview piece of paper that says you have a trust and who the trustee is, etc. So those are your basic papers in an estate plan. Right. This is a very simple, broad brushstroke is what we're talking about here. And I want to reiterate, once again, we're not giving legal advice, tax advice, nothing like that. But we are talking in very broad terms on what you should do for your family. Yes. So if you have your estate plan in order, the things that you will achieve are less taxes, less legal and professional fees, peace of mind, control after your incapacity or death. And what you avoid is probate conservatorship, uh, guardianship, and uncertainty. Because probate, I mean, especially when, you know, the pandemic hit, probate took a year or two to get through the system because the courts were closed. So you never know what's going to happen. Now, there's one caveat here. We are probate certified. Yes, we are. So if you know anyone that needs to sell a probate property, we can do that for you too. Yes, yes. We're fully trained on probate from the real estate side of things. Now, I think what people get, they think it's going to be expensive to do a trust. Well, just let me tell you here in a minute what probate is going to cost. But estate plan, they run about 2500 to 3500 for a basic estate plan, and it's worth every single cent, especially if you have minor children. Not only just assets. People, I think, think, oh, I don't have enough assets. Well, shoot, if you own a home in California, you probably have enough assets. But even if you don't, if you have minor children, that's going to be a big uh, issue and why you also want to have an estate plan. Right. If something were to happen, it's already taken care of to follow your wishes. And usually your wishes are what the family wants. Usually everybody sits down together and says, hey, who's going to pull the plug? <laughs> There's a form for, for that. <laughs> yes, there is. But you can predetermine that. So what is a California probate? So it's a court-supervised process that takes place after someone passes away to handle their property distribution to the family. There's a default plan, consequences of failing to do an estate plan. Generally, the California law and judge determine who gets your what and when. Um, it's called intestate succession, and you don't want that. Intestate it's, means dying without a will. It's uh, costly and lengthy, and it's public record. So if you have anything that you don't want to be public record, you need to not go to probate. Yes, um, if you've got a rare baseball collection and you don't want anybody to know you have it, <laughs> you definitely want to get a trust. Because it creates um, predator and creditor issues, because when the, the probates are public record, then, um, you know, people come out of the woodwork. So let's talk about the thresholds. Personal property threshold in California to go to probate is 184500 That's personal property. And real estate, if it's anything more than 61500 That's everybody. So that's everybody. So you're going to go to probate with any kind of real estate in California. So if that's the case, then you're going to probate. So the thing um, about probate fees, which is the thing that's gonna blow you away here. And I will write some notes here in the comments just to kind of explain this. But um, the standard fee formula for probate is they are, probate fees are calculated on your gross 
a state. That means the example here that I'm going to give, it's 4% of the first 100,000, 3% of the next 100,000, 2% of the next 800,000, and 1% of the next 9 million and up from there. Um, so amounts above 25 million is determined by the court. <laughs> yes, let's hope you're in that category. Mm -hmm. So pretty much everything is subject to probate except your 401k, things that have a designated beneficiary already. Those don't count. But here's the example. So the example is um, Jane Doe's exa exa ex example. She has a house with a fair market value of a million dollars and a mortgage of six hundred thousand. Her car is worth twenty thousand. She has a motorhome worth ten thousand and a retirement account with a beneficiary designation worth fifty thousand. So that makes her gross estate subject to probate one million thirty thousand. That's the house, the car, and the RV. So now those standard fees that apply in this case is 46,600, 46,600. And this is a basic, basic example here because now the houses, I mean a million dollars, and by the way, she had a $600,000 mortgage against that house. It doesn't count. It's the gross value. So now even after you pay off the house, let's say you sell it for a million, you pay off the $600,000 mortgage that you had, your heirs have 400000 left there, and they're going to pay 46600 in probate fees. Well, based on your example, if you don't pay the probate fees and you get a trust, mm -hmm. it sounds like you could buy another car and another RV. That's right. I mean, that just <laughs> blew me away. So the average cost of, of a trust around 3000 probate fees on this example, 46600 so it is really important, really important that you get your trust done. Of course, we have people we can refer, refer you to if you need someone, but it is really, 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 I can't stress enough, important. We've been through so many things ourselves and with our clients that have been through just horror stories with this. For example, um, when you take your property out of your trust, if you have one, and then you forget to put it back, or you get busy, or you don't check, happens all the time and they don't get put back in the trust and then something happens, then you're in a pickle. Yeah, what usually happens is you're refinancing a loan on it. They won't refinance it in the trust, even though the trust usually carries your name. It doesn't have to. I like the creative names on trust. They take it out of the trust into the individual's name. They get the loan. They get busy, they get the money, they're doing whatever they wanted to do with the money and they forget to put it back in the trust. Mm -hmm. Probate. Yeah, it happens all the time. <laughs> so there are some cases where you can get it put back in after your death. It's just a roll of the dice you don't want, want to take and we've just had one with a client that um, they did not put it back in and the judge did not allow it to be put back in so it did go to probate. It was a mess. Yeah, sometimes escrow can just handle that, no problem. They file a little paper and the paper goes through, but the judge is not obligated to put it back in the trust. Mm -hmm. So if it's complicated, there's a lot of errors. Most things aren't complicated until somebody passes away that doesn't have directions lined out on how they want it to ha how they wanted it to go, and different people see it happening different ways. You're gone, they're here. That's where the argument starts. Right. And this is not a place where you want to do this yourself. This is a, not a DIY situation. So things like legal zoom and things like that, every single person, family situation is individual. And I just highly recommend that you use a professional. Right. Because there's we're not so many things that can go wrong. I've got a list here. <laughs> right. But we're not bashing legal zoom. I no. mean, it's, something's better than nothing. Let's put it like that. First step is always better than no step at all. So I'm just going to go through the five misperceptions because these are why people don't get a trust. Uh, number one, all I need is a will. Well, you, all you need is a will if you only have a million two in assets and you want to go to probate. All you need is a will. Um, all I need is a power of, att of attorney. Not true. Um, estate planning is only for rich people. Well, that's also not true because you could have no assets and have minor children. You still need a trust. Um, estate planning is only for married couples. Well, I think the marriage rate now is down. I mean, there's more people, I think, living together than married. So, yes, you need a trust. Um, and estate planning is a one-time task. That's just not true. Your life changes. Your family changes. And so you need to plan on updating your trust on a regular basis uh, over the years when things change and things happen. 
So that are the five misconceptions of having a trust. Once you get one established, the changes go very easily. Mm -hmm. There's, it's not long process deal. It's like, hey, we were living here. We sold this house. We bought this house. Okay, that's just an address swap. Hey, we opened a new brokerage account. We got a big bonus this year for Christmas. We're putting that in a new brokerage account. Just throw that account in there. It gets much easier once you've done the first right. step of the process. There is $18.9 trillion with a T of real estate assets getting ready to be passed down from the boomers uh, down to Gen X and millennials. That is unprecedented record numbers of real estate and money that is going to pass down. So if you want to make sure that your family members get the majority of that $18.9 trillion with a T, then please be sure to get your trust in order. Put it at the top of your list for your um, planning for the new year. Yeah, a lot of things are changing. There's about 40 million people right now in the silent generation, World War II and before, let's say that. There's about almost 90 million people that are baby boomers. That's what Lisa's talking about. That's mm -hmm. where the T comes in. So it's getting ready to double what's going on. That's right. So I think that's all we have for today, but I just really thought those numbers and the probate fees were shocking. And I wanted you guys all to know because we do this every day and want to make sure you know that we can refer you to someone. Um, we are probate certified with the Berkshire Hathaway probate team, and we're the only agents here in Ventura that are. So if you know anyone that needs help with their probate that has a property they've inherited, or you have any questions at all, um, you know where to find us. GaryandLisa.com. Your real estate edge.